2015 I organised a little project which I call Access World Seminars and that's what this is right now. So I've been going at this for about four and a half to five years and it's been wonderful. Uh, the lights turned on for me, I had some big changes happen in my own life and one of my biggest desires then was to tell somebody else about it. Have you ever noticed that in your life when something good happens, the first thing you want to do is tell people and say, hey, this is great. And whether it be getting married, somebody just proposed to you, whether it be a present or a gift that you got that you really wanted, you want to tell people about it, how wonderful. New car, you want to not only tell people, you want to show it. Okay, so that's, that's what happened in my life and that's why I do this today. Now I'm, you know, horrible. There's horrible things that are happening in this world. Now the thing that I've done to keep my, my life balanced, one of the things that I've done is to create this space, Access World Seminars, because it keeps me balanced and it helps me to realize that there's people out there like yourselves who actually believe in change, you believe in transformation, you believe that we could actually make a difference. If there's enough of us teaching good principles, if there's enough of us lifting others around us, hopefully we'd get rid of some of the trauma and tragedy in life. So that's the goal, is that if we expand to yeah. seminars and other meetup groups, as we get messages out there and try and help people, lift people, we can create different results and a different future for not only ourselves but for our communities and eventually the world. Okay, so that's Access World Seminars. So that's a little bit about me. I attended my first seminar when I was 15 and after that seminar I, there was something that happened which was incredible. I had a stutter going into that seminar. I couldn't speak, especially when good-looking girls came around. I would start tripping over my words. Anyone had that experience? <laughs> okay. And I would stutter. And I started to develop a speech impediment. And this was causing me challenges because I wanted to communicate. I wanted to share my feelings and thoughts with people. I wanted to you know, chat with girls, and I couldn't do it. After attending this seminar, I discovered something very interesting. I discovered that our mind is, well some people say it's like a computer, but really computers are like us because we came first. So they've built computers to replicate what we can do in our mind, however computers aren't quite as good. In fact they're nowhere near as good. They don't have emotions and other things. I discovered a thing called affirmations. Who's heard of affirmations? So affirmations is a way that we can reprogram the mind or the unconscious mind. I started saying the affirmation, I speak clearly and well. And I repeated this over and over again. If ever I started, I would say this affirmation, I speak clearly and well. Uh, within two years the stutter was gone. Now I just did this consistently and I realized that programming the mind may not happen in an instant. It may take a lot of work and it may take a lot of time. Now the other thing that I did was I set up in my seminar that I was going to be somebody. I was training in karate at the time and I pictured myself winning tournaments. I pictured myself being great at my sport because I loved it. When I was 16 years old I became the Australian karate champion. So that was a really big achievement for me. And So I started to get this idea between setting up things in our mind and creating them in reality, in real life. So I started to see that there was a link between the work that we do mentally, the work that we do through meditation, the work that we do through mental rehearsal and mental projection, the stuff that we've heard that athletes have done for years and years. Before going into a tournament, Chuck Norris would see himself winning the tournament. Before hitting a golf ball, either it's, whether it's a Tiger Woods or a Greg Norman, depending on which area you're born in, they would actually see in their mind, in their imagination, they would see that ball going down the fairway in that straight line and landing close to that hole, if not in the hole. And they would see that in their mind. They would use these skills and tools of mental rehearsal, mental projection, to make their life work. Now this was great because my life started working. A bit later on I got married. And six years later I got divorced. Something wasn't working. Suddenly there was another person here. And I realised that even though I could make my own life work, I could not make somebody else believe what I wanted them to believe or to do what I wanted them to do and I realized that this is another whole challenge working with another person who's had struggles in relationships who's had some serious struggles in relationships well divorce is one of the ultimate rejections that we can face in life because this is the person who's supposed to know us best 
or better than anybody in the world and this person's rejected us and that's how I felt at the end of this. However, I went back to the drawing board and decided that I needed to learn about relationships, that I needed to step up my game and understand relationships. And what I came to discover was that the most important relationship we have is one with ourselves. And if that relationship is harmonious, then we can invite somebody else into that relationship. I also discovered something else. In As fact, I walked into a house, I noticed that there was a room full of books. She was like a librarian or something. I was wondering who she was. And as we sat down, I took the report, I began telling her some stories about my life and she was amazing. She just listened very carefully and then she said this, this profound truth and it's something that changed my life, the trajectory of my life from then on. She said, unless you change sufficiently, you will continue to attract the same type of person into your life. And that was a big aha moment for me. And I thought to myself, well, how do I change? And isn't this the question we all ask? How do I change? Here I am, I'm going through life and I'm getting certain results and some of these results I don't want. Some of these results are negative. Some of these results are causing me to harbour negative feelings, emotions in my body. I don't want some of those results. Some of them are good. Like who's got this combination of good results they're getting and sometimes not so good? Anyone got that? Anyone resonate with that? Yeah, so we've got these things coming into our life where some are positive and others are less than positive. And what we want, really, is to have more positive and less negative, or less, less than positive, if to use a double negative. So we want less of that, less of the things that we don't want and more of the things that we do want. And I discovered that the secret to all of this lies not in the conscious mind, but in the unconscious mind. You see, each of us has a conscious mind and we also has an, have an unconscious mind. Now, it's not necessarily your conscious mind that messes your life up, that causes you not to get the results that you want in life. Often, more often than not, it's the unconscious mind. Because there are two lots of thoughts in your head. There are the thoughts you know about and the thoughts you don't know about. And it's often the thoughts you don't know about that are causing these traumas or troubles or upsets or complaints or less than positive experiences that are coming into our life and we're attracting them to us to us uh, has anyone ever heard of the law of attraction uh, a lot of people heard about the law of attraction got really excited about it went out and they got the video and they watched it and then they started wishing wishful thinking and a lot of them found the law of attraction didn't work why didn't it work weren't you just supposed to think about it and visualize it and then it was supposed to magically appear so what they've done is they've looked at that law, the law of attraction, and they said really it should be the law of action. Because attraction, or the law of mental rehearsal, you're only halfway there. You've then got to take massive action. You've got to put in the work and make the changes in your life.